You know, this is, we talked a little bit on signing date about the unique schedule that the quarter system gives us. And so uh, today, as we have now started the spring quarter um, out of the fall and the winter, now starting spring quarter, we have the opportunity to announce uh, not only for new additions to our program, but some of the guys that have already signed who have started here, they're going to have the opportunity to go through spring practice. Um, we are right now, we just got back from spring break. We started the spring quarter on Wednesday and we have kind of gotten right into it with weightlifting, COVID testing beginning again, getting everybody kind of week zeroed back in to what we're doing. Uh, we're lifting, we're still going through our winter workout program and having the opportunity to do some position meetings to start the installation with our players. Well, we're gonna do this for about 10 days. Spring practice will begin on April 19th, which is Friday. We will be in shorts on Friday and Saturday, and then pretty much practicing Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, from now until uh, April 24th, which is going to be the spring game. We'll practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday, except for the Easter holiday. We won't practice that Friday and Monday to get our 15 practices in. We're, we've pushed everything back because of the new rule where we're not able to go out in the spring recruiting. Uh, it's gonna be a dead period until the end of May. And so we move spring practice back a little bit. We have a couple new coaches uh, right now that I think it's important to get them uh, acclimated to what we're doing in our offense and defense. But I also think it's important uh, to be able to get some of these newcomers and guys that are gonna be here for the first time the opportunity to get involved with the team and to really start to understand uh, the offense and the defense. Uh, talking, starting first with uh, some of the newcomers, uh, the four, four of the newcomers, one being um, where there's three on the defensive side of the ball and one on, one on offense. Uh, we had talked at signing date that there would be some more additions. Uh, I still don't think we're done with adding a couple more players to our roster for the 2021, but really excited about the four guys that are, that are coming here in the spring who just started classes. Uh, three of them are in the secondary. One, Balaam Buchanan, who's transferring from Tennessee. The one thing you're going to see that's constant with all of these additions, uh, Balin has started 31, he's appeared in uh, 31 games and had 13 starts in the SEC uh, at Tennessee as a corner. It brings an awful lot of experience. Playmaking ability has got great size. Uh, athleticism, when you watch his film, I really think has a chance to be uh, a really special player. And when uh, the key, some key ingredients that we said walking into this uh, that we needed to improve in, in for 2021 was we had to improve in the back end. We've got some great players returning and guys like B.J. Williamson, Cedric Woods as a freshman. Um, you've got Zach Hannibal who started almost every game at the other corner. You've got Jaden Cole, uh, Khalil Ladler is back, but I think some of these new guys are going to bring some, some real experience to the back end. Uh, the other one is Elijah Hamilton uh, who is coming in. He's appeared in 41 games in his college career. Uh, Vanderbilt was a captain for Vanderbilt in 2020. Uh, again, great size. You're talking about 6'2", 200 plus pounds, uh, athletic. Uh, like I said, played for played in 41 games in his SEC career at Vanderbilt. And we're certainly excited to bring him in. And the last one as a junior, um, Mason Miles, who uh, played in 27 games, had 58 tackles at Arkansas. Same thing, a big, big safety, 6'2 plus, over 200 pounds. I think when you look at all three of those guys, they bring size, maturity, and experience to a secondary that I think really needs it. Uh, really excited about the new secondary coach and Perry Carter. I uh, think he's going to do a great job and certainly bolstering the back end with three guys like this is going to create a great competition this spring and really going to be something to watch uh, as these guys continue to compete. Uh, the other place where we wanted to make an immediate contribution was at the running back position. We had lost both Izzy Tucker and Justin Henderson, both who just graduated. Uh, we had about, I think it was five football players just graduate in the winter quarter. Uh, with both of those two upperclassmen leaving and Justin Henderson um, and Izzy Tucker, we felt like there were some people in the transfer portal. Marcus Williams, the tailback out of Appalachian State, 
Uh, again, has rushed for over 2,000 yards, over 500 yards every year of his career. Uh, a lot of experience. Again, you look at it, I think it's 42 games that he played during his career. And that's the one thing you look at, 42, 31, 28. These guys have played a lot of college football, and that's what makes me so excited about adding them to a really a very talented roster but also a very young roster. When you look at, I think, guys like Harlan Dixon are going to be really good. Greg Garner, excited to see what he can do. We signed another freshman running back, but I think bringing a guy like Marcus Williams in is going to provide not only some leadership, uh, some toughness, but some game experience because that's something that we don't have coming back uh, right now in our secondary. Uh, the other place that, uh, with those four guys being new, but there's also a handful of other players, Demarcus Gordon, a junior college player that we had talked about uh, who had signed earlier uh, has enrolled in the spring Carson Bruno uh, from over at Bird High School uh, has enrolled uh, Jacob Brown a walk-on punter is is here right now excited to see what he can do to turn try and help us with our punting situation and having both Khalil Ladler and Willie Baker uh, back and I say back because they uh, weren't sure they were coming back they're enrolled in the in the spring quarter um, and so excited to have to add those guys to our depth as we're starting to walk into a spring practice right now. So um, overall, when you look at it, I think there's some very uh, talented players in this group. Uh, I think really it's creating an excitement and an energy. I think this football team has made some huge strides uh, in the uh, in the month of January and February and getting ready for this season. Excited about seeing some of the upper underclassmen that are starting to come into their own. Names like Jamison Kelly, Christian Archangel, uh, Broderick Calhoun, um, Kyle Maxwell, I'm CJ McWilliams, really excited to see what he's going to do. Uh, Dakota White, to see the way that he's really starting to emerge. A lot of these underclassmen that really haven't had an off-season conditioning program yet or a spring practice because we didn't have the luxury of having all this last last year. And so really like what's what's coming together right now, but really excited about getting into phase two of this 2021 season and getting into spring practice with everything. So um, that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, would love to answer any questions if either one of you have any. Ben or Corey, feel free, either one there you can go first. Up to you guys. Ben, go ahead. C C Coach, you, you talk about adding some of these older guys um, to your team and you know we see it across college football as far as how valuable the transfer portal is but when you look back you know at how the season ended with the loss to TCU and the loss to Georgia Southern how important was it for you you know in the month of January and February and now that we're into March to try to get an edge back for your program you know it's the first uh, season that you guys have had since 2013 I believe that you didn't finish over 500. Well, and also it's the first season that we've come into an off season without a bull win. Um, I've always told the team one of the hardest things to overcome is success. Because when you're successful, everybody wants to pat you on the back, talk about all the great things going on, finished on a high note, everything's running positive into the off season. Uh, the thing I think you see right now is with this football team is you can't take anything for granted. I mean, understanding how we finished last season, we all know the highs and lows and everything we had to, uh, everything everybody had to overcome to be able to play during a COVID season. Uh, but I think for this football team, I think as much as anything, we had the ability to go to a bowl game. But right now, I mean, to lose the bowl game, to come into the off season, I think it's more of a, you know, let's not take anything for granted. I love the way they're working. Um, I love right now their determination. Uh, we've got some young guys that got a little taste of it last year that I think are really starting to mature and grow. And then I think this transfer portal by adding some upperclassmen and I think especially in this first year you got to be really careful with your roster management. It's easy to let it get away from you. Now, this is the first time we've ever had uh, a do-over where nobody's year counted uh, where you've got we had 16 true freshmen last year we signed nine more true freshmen so we're gonna have 25 true freshmen on our roster for this year. I just didn't want to sign 
20 freshmen last year and 20 again this year and have half of our football team true as true freshmen and have an imbalance of our classes. So uh, I think by uh, when you talk about some of the seniors that are no longer here and we talked about Justin Henderson and Izzy Tucker, uh, but also uh, an Anton Lewis that was going to be an upperclassman. You had uh, Willie Allen who's no longer here. Uh, you've got a couple of uh, Cody Russi who's no longer here. You got a couple CJ Powell. Uh, some of those guys guys, Adrian Hardy, that moved on, having the ability to replace them with seniors and some grad transfers, especially like some of the guys that we've replaced them with, with the number of starts and the number of uh, games played and experiences at a high level of football, that's what really excites me about some of the additions. I think it's what our team needs. Uh, going into the offseason, we've always talked about every football team has a life expectancy of one year. Uh, this, this year is different than any of the other eight. As people talk about going into year nine, uh, it's really the first eight. Uh, we're all unique in their own rights. They all had needs, recruiting needs that you're trying to answer. And I think I heard a comment today that it's not about just having 85 guys on your roster but it's about having the right 85 guys on your roster and making sure that you have a mix of experience as well as newcomers uh, so the learning curve going early in the season isn't so great. I think it's fantastic these guys can be here for spring practice and get this under their belt before they get into a rigorous uh, summer conditioning program before we start in the fall. Corey? Skip. Um... <laughs> It, it was really one year ago today where uh, we started to see uh, a lot of the uh, the sports world kind of just change almost in, in, in the in the blink of an eye. So going from last year where you guys weren't able to have any spring practice at all, and then playing a season after that, how much do you anticipate uh, there being some differences in maybe how you guys conduct or, or try to run spring ball this year with, without having it last year? No, it'll be pretty much the same. No, we've got to adjust with the new coaches, with Coach Googe and Coach Carter, um, putting some of that together. We've got to give them a chance to get their feet on the ground with the offense and the defense and the terminology swing coach. Um, but then we're just talking about treating it like it's day one. Treating it day one, we're starting all over with installation, uh, going back to two plus two is four. Uh, I think one of the rules the NCA passed a couple weeks ago, giving us 10 hours instead of eight, and enabling us to add a couple more hours in the meeting room and in a walkthrough has been invaluable, especially for some of these young and new players uh, to be able to go through it mentally. So uh, I don't think it's gonna change a lot. Uh, we started all over in January 1. It's a new year, and not having the opportunity to go through it last year is going to be an eye-opening experience for some of these underclassmen, just like these winter workouts have been. Uh, but I think it's... It's needed. I think they're excited about it. I think they're, we had a winter workout this morning at 6 a.m. I think they're chomping at the bit. I think they're tired of doing drills and competing against each other. And they're really, really ready to get out on the field and roll the balls out on the grass and be able to play the game. Ben? Coach, obviously, at the end of the year, Luke went down with the leg injury. And, you know, I don't want you to have to get into the specifics of where he's at. But mm -hmm. how excited are you to see uh, just your group of four quarterbacks and where they are this spring? And on top of that, how important is it for you to have a starter coming out of the spring? Well, I you hit the nail on the head. I'm just excited to get him out for spring because a year ago uh, we had these same quarterbacks. We had J.D. Head had come in early to go to, through spring practice. Luke Anthony had transferred in here at this time last year uh, to be able to go through spring practice. You had Aaron Allen was already on the roster. So we came in last year going, these three guys, I'm really excited to watch them compete during this offseason. Um, and as you said, Corey, it was this day a year ago, a uh, year ago today, because it was right before we started practice on Friday the 13th, and it was that Thursday that we got kind of kicked out of the building and put into quarantine for the next four months. But um, I think all those guys were here a year ago. Uh, we had a limited fall camp, and then we had to go play a season. So I'm excited to watch those guys just go compete every day, where it's not going against an opponent and game planning every week, but it's executing our offense and being able to really understand where their hot reads are and being able to understand it and execute it uh, under pressure. And so I think 
it's going to be great to have those three and then Caleb Holstein, the, the other true freshman uh, who enrolled in winter, uh, to have those four quarterbacks compete. I think Luke Anthony and talking with the doctors, everybody's incredibly optimistic. Uh, at this point, you know, the bones are healing very nicely. They're expecting 100% recovery. And we are hoping maybe sometime before spring practice, uh, him being cleared to go through everything individually, pass scale, no contact stuff. But they are expecting 100% recovery with Luke. And I think having the opportunity to go through some of this uh, mentally, if not completely physically, to go through it all mentally is going to help him as well. Um, I'm anxious to see how much he's going to be able to do by the end of spring or where he is. But I don't know. I think a lot of that's going to be predicated on um, – do you name a starter or do you get a really good evaluation of where you are with those three quarterbacks uh, who have all have game experience now and uh, Caleb Holstein, who's the young guy who's coming in. So uh, I think it'll be very competitive. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch those guys progress and develop as we go through the next 15 days of spring practice. Corey? Skip, you mentioned uh, the, the, the addition of Coach Gouge earlier. Um, you know, when you when you talk about the addition of him on staff and you couple it with, you know, Cody deciding to leave and transferring out, uh, both of your tackles uh, that were going to start, you know, a year ago are no longer in the program. So when you talk about that, I guess really a need to, to develop a lot of guys in a hurry, what, was he almost a, a perfect fit for you guys to, to be able to bring onto this staff when you think about it? I, I, think, <clears throat> I think it's a home run for our program. Um, David DiGuglielmo is a, a great, he's a great coach. I had the opportunity to be around him um, when I was uh, when I was first a head coach at Connecticut. We were together, we were together at South Carolina, and now he spent the last 17 years in the NFL. And to be able to land a guy with that type of experience, uh, that type of background, that type of resume, having two Super Bowl rings, um, developing the guys that he has in college at Connecticut and South Carolina. Uh, his experience, I think, is invaluable uh, right now for those young guys that are in that room. And you talked a little bit about trying to break some guys in. I mean, Byron Rossell has played a limited role here. Dakota White, we think, can be really special. Uh, Walker Hankinson uh, is there at tackle. Sam Williams, the transfer coming in. Having guys on the inside like Josh Moat and Abe Delphin who have played a lot of football along with the young guys like uh, Jaron Gilbert and Christian Henderson. Now, I think there's some very talented players there, uh, but I also think there's some talented players that are coming in. And I'm excited to watch the whole room grow, not just as football players, Players, but academically, socially, uh, I'm really excited to see what he's going to be able to do with that room. Uh, I think he's an excellent football coach, feel very blessed, very lucky uh, that we were able to, to get him here. I'm appreciative to his loyalty because I know he's had uh, opportunities to leave here since, he's already, since he first came. Uh, he's had a lot of people inquire about him maybe staying in the NFL, uh, but I'm very appreciative for his loyalty. I know what kind of guy he is, and I just, he's not only a great coach, but he's a dear friend in this business, and I'm just really excited uh, to see the impact that he's going to have. I think the same thing is true when you look at uh, Perry Carter and you look at his experience. Eight years in the NFL, he's been at Texas Tech, he's been in the Big 12, uh, he's coached a lot of different places, played the game for 10 years. Now, I think when you look at his experience, because the two biggest areas that I feel like we needed to improve from the 2020 football team was we needed to get better on the front, on the offensive line, where we were, um, we gave up way too many sacks and our yards per carry was way down. Our product production was not what it's been. And I think bringing in a guy like Coach Googe and Coach Carter and supplementing both of those rooms, not only with great coaches, but also with, with some very talented newcomers coming into it to help us. Um, I'm excited. It's going to be fun to watch in spring ball. I think it's it's got a chance to be a completely different look as a football team. 
I know David Blackwell uh, likes to be very aggressive as a defensive coordinator, and I think we were somewhat limited, and I think he had to call a game last year trying to protect his secondary. Hopefully with the experience of a guy like Coach Carter and the experience of some of these guys coming in and some of the young guys we talked about earlier that had a chance to play quite a bit last year, uh, I think as a football team we have an opportunity to have an entirely different look and certainly take our weaknesses from last year and turning them to strengths this year. Ben? Coach, you, you talk about that secondary, and you mentioned, you know, obviously B.J. Williamson was a, a first-team all-conference type of guy, and you've added the, the guys from the SEC as transfers. But uh, among the returners, uh, when you talk about a Jaden Cole or Khalil Ladler or Zach Hannibal, uh, some guys that have played a little bit, what, what do you need to see from them to have confidence in that group uh, that mixed in with those transfers as you enter, you know, after the spring into the fall. What are you looking to see from the spring? Just consistency um, in playing the game. And you talk about, you know, the coverage not bare, you know, in the secondary. And that's why I felt comfortable in bringing in a couple upperclassmen, seniors that are going to be one and done that are grad transfers. But when I look at that secondary and I look at Zach Hannibal, I look at, at uh, DJ Brown, I look at Broderick Calhoun, Dallas Taylor Cordes, CJ Johnson, Charvis Thornton, Cedric Woods, there's a lot of young guys in that group right now. And I just want to see them mature and grow as football players. I'd like to see them, some of them need to put on a little bit more weight, some of them need to be more consistent in what we're doing. Uh, and the same thing when you talk about the safeties, having guys like B.J. Williamson, having guys like uh, Jaden Cole, Khalil Ladler back, Christian Archangel, Jamison Kelly, uh, some of the names that are on there, there's a lot of talent, uh, but you look at them, a lot of them are freshmen and redshirt freshmen. They're just young. And so I think by bringing in experienced, proven guys, uh, I think is going to be a great opportunity for these younger players to see uh, a safety that, you know, Christian Archangel is about 185 pounds, where all of a sudden he looks at a guy at 205 and says, I need to get bigger. Uh, and I think he will, and I think he'll continue to raise his game, and I think it's going to create great competition back there. But um, it's not just bringing in three or four guys. I think uh, we're going to be three deep in our secondary that's going to be competing their tail off this spring, and I think it's only going to make everybody better by bringing in those upperclassmen to help the room. So I like to see them just mature, uh, grow into their position, grow into their bodies. We talk a lot about our off-season conditioning program. Some of them need to get bigger. Some of them need to gain weight some of them need to lose weight you know and so just seeing that they can make those changes to their bodies um, individually and then and then take that into their knowledge of playing the game onto the field Corey Skippy's been in the program a year now but um, and I know that you got a lot of experience back out wide but but Jared means uh, the transfer from Tennessee uh, just talk about how important this spring is for a guy like him in his position where he's he's gonna have to fight for playing time he is he is very very talented and a year ago on the scouting teams when our defense was going against him every day I mean every day they'd come down and say coach when when he's eligible to play he's gonna be a bear now he's gonna give defenses fits um, he's got size he's got speed uh, he's learning the game. He's growing again. He's just a he's just a puppy. I mean, he's a freshman, a redshirt freshman right now. When you look at him. But I think very, very talented. Now, he did come off a knee injury at the end of last year, so he's going to be somewhat limited a little bit for spring practice. Uh, but he's healing nicely, expecting a full return by the time we get to fall camp. Uh, but I think there's going to be the whole, the whole thing, theme, that you keep hearing me say is competition. When you look at our wide receiver position right now, as we just mentioned and went through all the players in the secondary, but you talk about Griffin Bear, Smoke Harris, Taj McGee, Trey Harris is a young guy, a freshman, who I think is going to press for playing time. C.J. McWilliams, Isaiah Graham, Praise Corey, Wayne Toussaint, Jawan Johnson, Kyle Maxwell, Jared Means. The one thing that you keep, there's, 
there's a lot of guys that can play at every one of these positions. And what we tried to do in this offseason was create competition. Uh, I made the comment earlier, I don't think we're done with the transfer portal. Uh, I think there's going to be some more additions that go into this team. And I'm trying to create as much competition as I can for this football team moving forward, making sure that we can balance the classes from senior all the way down to freshman under the challenging times of the rules that the NCAA passed out this year. I think we've just, uh, we all went through it last year where all of a sudden you had to go play a game and you had 28 players were out. I want to make sure that if we have a lot of injuries, uh, that we've got guys that are good enough to step in to a role to be able to play because we've talked about this before. The championship teams aren't the ones that have the best 22. They're the ones that have the best 44 because at some point in time during the season, you're going to have an injury. You're going to have a guy have to come off a bench uh, and play a key role for you. And that's why I think the development of spring practice and the competition that's being built in every room, in every room, uh, I think is going to make us a better football team. Mm, excuse me. You talk about all, all that youth in the secondary. You're also really young up front on the defensive line. I know yes. you're, you know, we got a glimpse of some of those guys last year getting an opportunity with Deshaun Hall and Michael Clark and, and some of those guys. But um, as talented as those guys are, how important is it for you this spring to have, you know, one or two of those guys step up and prove that they are a dude that can really get after the passer? Well, and, and you talked about some of the guys that are, you know, redshirt freshmen, but the true freshmen, when I look at Joe Mason, when I look at Ben Bell, when I look at Kershawn Fisher, when I look at Dontrell Cobbs, uh, Shaq Spears, you know, I then you put in Kiwi Rose, Deshaun Hall, Michael Clark, and some of those other guys. We do have a lot of youth there, but we have a lot of talent and athleticism there. And so that's a position where maybe we're not uh, quite as upperclassmen heavy, which is why I think guys like Gerald Wilbon, Eric Kinzer, DJ Jackson, uh, Willie Baker, some of those guys in there and have these young guys where maybe they don't have to play 70 plays a game, but they can go in and contribute 20, 30 plays for you and make you a better defensive football team. But I definitely think that uh, when you look at our front, uh, we're young, but I think we're going to be very talented and very active. And I think by being able to shore up our secondary a little bit, it's going to give Coach Blackwell an opportunity to be a little bit more aggressive with some of those athletic, those athletic guys up front. You guys have any more questions? All right. Thanks, Coach. You appreciate it. Well, and let me just say this, too. I mean, I know that spring practice is starting Friday, and we have the um, kind of the Meet the Bulldog opportunity that Friday, which we're really looking forward to that. And just want to say congratulations to, uh, to the women's basketball team for their uh, win and can, good luck to them as they continue in their way in men's basketball as they get started uh, tonight with their with their tournament. I know baseball's hosting uh, Arkansas this week. There's just a lot of exciting things going on. And I just want to wish all the spring sports good luck. Uh, just let you know we're, we're following everybody. So appreciate everybody being here today. Thanks.